Bush. She also appears on TV as an expert stock market analyst, so perhaps you have seen her commentary. So, Melissa, it's great to have you with us this morning. I'm going to go ahead and let you get started. Good morning. Can you hear me? I can. Wonderful. I am going to put the screen share up. Let me know if you can see my slide. Hello. Can everybody hear me? Can you see the slide? Oh, yep. Melissa, yes, I can. Sorry, I was <laughs> muted. <laughs> I was like, what happened there? Yeah, I Hi. muted myself. <laughs> Wonderful. Good. How long do I have to speak today? Let me know. You have 55 minutes. Great. Thanks so much for joining me. Exciting time to be here. The whole week we're talking about the election, the markets, what's going to happen between now and the election. So it's very, very interesting because there's 19 days away from the election. And typically you have a lot of volatility. You saw that even yesterday. And the market sold off yesterday. And now today we're up. So today we're going to talk specifically about gaps. If you have any questions, you can plop it in the room. I will see it here as we go along this morning. And again, today I'm going to talk about trading on the side of institutional money in gaps. I do appear on television on every single network and channel talking about the market, talking about the economy. If you have questions after today, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP, and you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So I have the stats in here for year-to-date for the trading room. And again, my average risk, these are all trades on margin, is around $3,000 per trade. Up for the year, again, this is through yesterday, $714,076. So it's been a very good year. And most of my trades are shorts, which we are going to talk about today, too. I run a live trading room. These are all the trades for the entire year. And then I also do options. So my options are separate, okay, from my day trades. Options, as you well know, you do not take on margin. Options are you pay the cost, you get in. I'm buying calls and selling them and buying puts and selling them. I'm risking more of my options trade. So I'm up over $2 million for the year in options. I'm risking about $8,000 per trade in options. And again, this is a separate newsletter service. If you're interested in this, you can email me. But everything I do, every single trade that I take is based on my gap method. So up over $3 million for the year. Very excited. Going into earnings season. Earnings season just started on Friday. JPM reported. And now here we are. Full on, next couple of weeks, it's going to be a busy time to trade. It's not only earnings season, but like I said, it's also the election coming up. So with 19 days away, there's going to be a lot of volatility and, of course, talk about whether or not the Fed is going to continue to lower rates, whether they're going to slow down rates, who's going to win, what's going to happen. And nobody knows. You know, when you're looking and seeing if you're trying to make predictions, there's a betting poll out there on who's going to win the election. No one really knows. And we won't know, obviously, until November. So we have to make decisions about what we're trading. And I've always really made this a thing for myself when I started trading very early on. Again, I've been trading for 16 years. I realized very early on that to make money in the market, I had to become an expert. So I became an expert in one thing. And I think this is one of the fails for a lot of people, mistakes that they make, if you want to call it that, they jump around from too many things. Find something that you can really, 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 really get good at and become an expert. I put this picture in. I went to the New York Botanical Gardens on Saturday. This lady, actually her name is Sarah. She's on Halloween Wars right now, if you watch Halloween Wars on the Food Network. Saw her there with two other pumpkin carvers. Unbelievable, unbelievable, could never do what they do. They're an expert, okay? She's an expert in pumpkin carving, all right? So that's what she does. If you become an expert in a specific strategy as a trader, you will do very well. Otherwise, you're all over the place, never really getting good at one thing, and then always wanting the next get rich quick thing, which isn't realistic. There's no get rich quick thing in the market. You have to take time, you have to be focused, you have to learn what to do, and like I said, you have to become an expert. So in order to become successful in the market, you have to become a specialist, a specialist in one specific strategy. If you're here today, I'm gonna to talk about mine. If it's something you're interested, then you'll know. A strategy that reads institutional money is my specific forte, or what I call power money in the market. It's really momentum, okay, I'm trading momentum. Yesterday we went long Apple. That was a momentum trade to the upside. Every trader on every level must learn the skill set, in and, and you, how do you do that? Through education. So if you're here this week, listening to all these people all day long today, and me for the next hour, you're trying to listen a little bit 
to hear if you want to learn more. You're not going to learn today my method. I teach it in a class that's 16 hours long, but you'll learn a little bit about what I do and see if something that I say in the next hour resonates for you, specifically with the strategy that I trade. Again, education is the way to go. Just anything that you do, any career, if you wanted to become a doctor, a dentist, an accountant, again, you have to learn how to do these things. For some reason, I don't know why it's the, the case, maybe it's because of the fact that a lot of people associate wealth with money in the stock market. They think they can just take a trade and get rich and not learn what to do, but that's just not practical and it's just not realistic. So here I was talking about Apple, just wanna put this in, this was yesterday's play of the day. Again, we did a day trade and we did an option in Apple. So we went long the stock, 233.30, here's the one minute chart. And again, my risk is what I call an advanced trader risk. If you wanna do less shares, you can do less shares. I did 2,500 shares. Kept going, got out though at 235.18, had a good exit. Had a good exit, I like to do fast trades, made $4,700. So here again was the gap. Apple closed here, gapped up, dropped, and then we bought it, got the move, boom. This is a one minute chart, okay? This is a one minute chart, this was yesterday's Apple. So again, I was talking about institutional money, what happened with Apple yesterday, it got bought. It got bought. In fact, Apple yesterday, up here at the tippy tippy top, made brand new all time highs. All right, this is before the market started to sell off yesterday. The only reason this even came down where it did was because the market then sold off yesterday. It was comments that Trump had made at the economic forum where he was speaking. Otherwise, I don't even think that would have happened. But anyways, this got bought. We were talking about institutional money. We also did calls. If you like to do options, now why might you want to do options versus day trains? I like to do both. It's really the same play, just a different way to take the train. If you have uh, an account where you can do margin trades, you can do day trades. Otherwise, if you wanna do options, you can open up an options account with as little as $2,000 at a retail brokerage. So some people prefer options because you can trade with a smaller size account. You do not need an options, uh, a margin account to do options. These were actually really priced very well. Price was $1.60. Again, got out at 350. This could keep going. I did this trade. This trade is out to the 18th, but I got out yesterday. Nice trade. Again, looking for 100%. Got a little bit more than that. Ran up, made new highs, got out. If you took in contracts, a risk 1280, could have made 1520. One trade, in and out. Again, it is about momentum. Momentum, momentum, momentum. And again, looking at what institutional money is doing in the case of this, and Apple, again, going back here, this, oh no, here's the daily. This got bought. Actually, it started getting bought the day before. Actually, on Monday. So again, what is a gap? A gap is the difference between the close and the open. In the case of Apple, I'm going to go back here to Friday to Monday. Apple closed at one price at 4 o'clock Eastern time and opened up higher at 9.30, rallied, and then gapped up again, and then had the big move where it went over the high. And again, this is yesterday's, yesterday's bar. See that Apple's kind of flat this morning with the market up slightly. But anyways, good trade. You get in and out. Boom. Done. Quick. Okay. So how can you earn a living trading? Three steps. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Number one, you need a winning strategy. And you got to learn it first. Number two, you need a supportive mentor. You do and follow the mentor. Again, I run a live trading room every single day where I'm calling the trades, the entries, the exits, and where to put the stop. You decide your sizing, how many shares you want to take. Your risk should be the same or close to the same on every trade you, you take, not the share quantity, but the dollar risk, okay? And again, having a supportive mentor really makes a huge difference when you're trading. I didn't have that when I started. And when I, I took one class and I didn't, I didn't learn how to make money. But I learned there was something to training and I knew that I wanted to do it and I was motivated and excited to figure it out. And it took me three years to develop my own method. If I had had a mentor, it would have made a massive difference for me. And I wouldn't have lost as much money at the beginning and it would have been a lot easier. You know, having a, someone there to ask questions, email, call on the phone, be in the room every day, makes it so much easier. People are looking for that. People need that. They want someone that they trust, that they can follow, okay? And then number three, again, three steps to success, become an expert in one thing. Like I said, the pumpkin carver or, or anything, a brain surgeon, anything you want to do. You want to get good at it. 
And that is really your decision. Again, how, how, how interested are you are in trading? A lot of people are interested in trading because of the money. Yes, that's true. But for me, my previous career was I was in uh, real estate and I did mortgages. I was working seven days a week, helping people get loans to buy houses. It was a long time ago. But the fact is, I felt like I had no life. Trading has set hours. I get every weekend off. It's only Monday through Friday. I trade in the morning. And again, the market closes at four o'clock. So it's also the quality of life for me. It's the money and the quality of life. It's two things together. So again, you want to become an expert in one thing. You implement the strategy, get good, and then add size. Okay, add size and you can win big. Everyone wants to make a lot of money. You're, there's no one train that's going to do it for you. Remember all the Reddit stocks that blew up and then some people made a lot and some of those things, a lot, most of the people lost. You haven't heard anything about that for years now. Why? Because that was a, an anomaly. It was a once in a thing. Okay. I am not trading today. My assistant is running my trading room because I am here today with you going over and lecturing you to see if you are interested in learning my method. Um, someone's asking something. I don't know what the person put in there about something. I didn't know what that meant. I think that's a question for somebody else. Marissa, you have a question there about a prize. Anyways, getting on with what I was saying, how to make money in the market, okay? How do you make money in the market? You have to figure out the directional bias. So you need a strategy. One strategy, mine, is called golden gaps. So what is a golden gap? A golden gap is a gap that rates 20 points or more per the golden gap 26 point rating system. You take the trade in the direction of the gap, okay? So again, we went long apple. That was a bullish gap up. Okay, we did a short in Tesla recently. That was a gap down. That was a bearish gap. You do the trade as a day trade or an option, whatever works for you. Someone is asking about how do you find gaps? You find there you can find gaps anywhere. You can find gaps anywhere anywhere. It's not finding them, it's qualifying them and rating them. Okay? So again, that's what you're going to learn from me. Finding them is easy. There's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of things that gap on any given day, okay? But you've got to get the direction right to win. If you get the direction wrong, you're going to lose, okay? You're going to lose. This is a chart of BA here. This is a daily chart. This stock has been collapsing, has been falling, has earnings. I think or BA is next week. I'm pretty sure BA is next week. If you've been long BA for the last month and a half, for example, you, you, you're down. You're down, you're just losing, okay? And again, direction is key. It's so important, so important. Yes, this is a daily chart. This is a daily chart. Anyways, it's about determining who is in control. If, if Think about it. it it's, just, it's just common sense. If you're in the right direction, you're going to make money. People say, well, my discipline in this and that. No. If the momentum is in your favor and the stock's getting bought and it's moving higher, you're going to profit. If the stock is selling off like a hot cake and you're short, you're going to profit. If you're long, like for example, in the BA chart, you're, you're going to lose. I don't care where you got in. I don't care how you size yourself. You're going to lose if you're in the wrong direction. Okay. Um, with gap downs, if you can't short the stock, do you give out a corresponding put option? I have an options newsletter, as I said, as I said. So again, if you want to do the option, you can do the option or you can do the day trade or you can do both. That's up to you. Um, again, some people are doing both, some people are doing one or the other, because again, they have a preference. If you love options, stick with the options, learn the day trades. I still, I like to do both personally. But anyways, long story short, it's about the direction. If it's gonna fall, then you would want to do a put, okay? And again, if you wanna short it as a day trade, say you short a thousand shares, it drops a dollar, what are you gonna make? You're gonna make a thousand dollars, okay? So again, it's different as far as how you wanna take the trade as far as what time period. I'm doing day trades where I might be in and out of them in five minutes, 10 minutes, okay? I held the Apple option a little bit longer because I knew it was gonna make new highs and I got it over the high, okay? Um, I'm never, ever, 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 ever getting in right at the open, just so you know. So anyways, what is a gap? A stock gaps when the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. Simple. So there's gaps every day. 
Again, this is something that would not work for Forex because there's obviously only one close and open a week in Forex. So let's talk about the market. Remember all the way back, the market had this sell off. This was to start out September. And then what happened? Woo. Well, then we pushed up again. The market has been so bullish this year. It's like almost crazy how bullish it's been. And e, I know we sold off yesterday. I saw it. I was sitting at my desk. But I wouldn't be surprised if we flip around in the next couple of days or by Friday. I mean, just the market just does not want to sell off at all. And what's very interesting is the Fed, which has been the driving force, the, the belief system that the Fed was going to lower rates. Remember, remember last year in, in December, they said six times, five times this year. They didn't, they didn't lower rates until September. We literally went nine months, nine months without any rate reductions. And it didn't matter. The market believed that the Fed would lower rates, believed that all the crisis was over, believed inflation was going down, and that's all that mattered. So again, it's, it's about a belief system. Trading is getting the move, getting in and out, because you can't predict what's gonna happen in the election. You can't predict what the Fed's gonna do. You can't even predict what the earnings are gonna be in a stock. You don't know. Again, everybody thinks they know, they don't, okay? A gap in essentially, Deepak is asking about a gap, Let's just look at a gap here, for example, in the queues. A gap is a, that it's opening at a different price. So I'm going to go back here to where I was talking about. This was the beginning of September. It was after Labor Day. The market, this is the QQQs, this is the market ETF, closed at one price at 4 o'clock and opened down at 9.30. So it opened at a different price. That means it's a gap. Now, in this case here, it was a bearish gap. Um, again, I'm going to go over here where we were earlier. This closed at one price at four and opened at a higher price at 930. So this is a bullish gap. Okay. And again, same chart, same chart in the market. The QQQs have not made brand new all time highs yet. They're headed there. I mean, they're headed there. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens shortly as well. Because again, like I said, it's earnings season right now. And the banks have been strong. Goldman ran up yesterday like crazy in the gap on earnings. Okay. C was up too. Citibank. But anyways, you need a focus, and my focus is gaps. But my focus really is shorting. Now, again, we've gone long some things. If there's a good gap, I'm going to go long. We did it yesterday in Apple. But the fact is that I will look at both directions, whatever is the best gap. So what do I do? I rate gaps with this 26-point checklist. Again, this is a checklist for you to follow. You follow it. You can do it yourself. So yes, while I am a mentor to people and I run the live room and I'm a support for people, you're gonna learn how to do it yourself. You shouldn't need me really after the class at all. I just make it easier for you to take the trades and start to make money right after the class. But again, the rating system helps me determine who is in control. Who is in control? The bulls are the bears. So again, let's talk about gaps a little bit more. Gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are better than others. Some gaps are nothing gaps, meaning there's nothing to do. Like for example, the market gap today, before I got on here, I see no play in the market whatsoever today at all. No long, no short in the market. It's a nothing burger, okay? So some gaps are nothing gaps and some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change of direction. That's what's really important or a bigger move in the same direction. That's what we saw with Apple. That's what we saw with Tesla actually too last week. So understand BA and BA too. So understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. And that's very important because again, nothing lasts forever. Nothing goes up forever. Nothing goes down forever. And that's how you know when the power of money will flow to pay you. Now, many people have been predicting a correction, okay, a correction in the market. Again, hard to believe anything crazy would happen between now and the election. Could something happen after the election, after the fish? Sure, it might. But every time we've seen a sell off in the market, September is a great example that week in September, it's flipped around right away. Again, spies have made new highs. So again, every time the market has, quote unquote, what people want to call a correction, even though I don't use that terminology, the market's flipped around so quickly. It's very bullish, okay? So reading the footprints of institutional money will help you choose what direction to take trades. Again, reinforcing the belief system. If you understand it, this is common sense. If I, I live in New York City, I live in Manhattan. If I talk to a bum on the street, I'd say to him, if he had his last dollar, what should he do? He should go long Apple, not short it, 
I don't want him to lose his last dollar. Why? Because the stock is getting bought, okay? So again, same thing with the market. You have to go with the direction of the institutional money, not regular retail traders, not regular day traders who very often want to do things for gap fills that does not work consistently to make money. That is a falsehood. And again, I've been doing gaps for 16 years. So getting back to it, if you learn how to read the footprints of big position players before the momentum occurs, you can take the position in the right direction and then get out after the move happens for profit, just like I did with Apple. Again, we're, we're actively trading, we're day trading. Even the options, we're in, get the move, get out. We're in, get the move, get out. And then that's what you're doing. This is, we're not, we're not Warren Buffett here where we're long-term investing, okay? That's fine and dandy if you want to take long-term positions in stocks, but that's not how you chunk it out for profit and certainly not how you would earn a living doing this, okay? But you have to know how to find it. It's finding the power money, not finding the gap. It's easy to find gaps. You have to find the power money in the specific gap of the stock pick. It's the pick. So knowing how to read what institutional money looks like is essential to becoming a successful trader. And again, you can win big on this side of power. So again, what do I mean by institutional money? I mean getting the direction. This is Boeing. We did this. Look at it. So again, this is back early September. If you shorted the stock here, look where it went. Drop $20. Again, you want to find the power. You want to trade with it. And how do I do it? Reading the gap. Here was another one we did. This was snow. This was back... Well, this was an earnings gap. It was back the last earnings season. Again, we started the next earnings season here. It was the end of earnings for the summer. Uh, we did an option in snow. We did a day trade too. Cost was 350 Flipped it around, got in, got out. Here was the snow chart. Again, I called it on the 22nd. The option expired the 30th. Doesn't mean I'm holding it to the 30th. Doesn't mean that at all. Stock closed up here, gapped down. Rallied. You buy the put. We also shorted it. Got the drop. Get in, get out. Done. Boom. That's it. Again, you're doing options. You are trading the momentum. You're, we're buying the put and then we're selling it when we're up. And in this case here, you can see, take it all the way over, came down here, broke 115. So obviously it was in the money, deep in the money. We did the 120 puts. And again, I'm aggressive when I take these. So you, you have to understand why these things are happening. If you understand why something's going to fall, or why somebody's gonna rally, understanding it really helps you. It helps you make money. It helps you have conviction, helps you hold the train, helps you risk more. And I explain all of this in the class. A lot of people wanna know why. They wanna know why is the market rallying or why is Tesla falling or whatever the case may be. Why is BA falling? Again, if you follow fundamentals and that's good for you and that's great, but a lot of times the price action does not go with the fundamentals. So that's gonna be problematic. Again, you saw that with the whole year, like I was talking about with the Fed. So again, using a 26 point checklist is how I make the determination of whether or not I want to short BA or Tesla or anything at all. So again, why gaps? Gaps are the most powerful show of price action in a chart. Gaps have large moves. Gaps can move up or down. Some of the biggest momentum moves in a daily chart though come from a gap. Again, perfect example there, we just looked at the snow. So when I trade, I'm looking for in trading momentum. Then whether you have a small size or a large size, you will get a good risk to reward. Because again, you want a good risk to reward. Think about it. If you have a certain amount of money, you want to get that money and you want to turn it over as many times as you can and make as much as you can with that money as fast as you can and turn it over as quickly as you can and get the biggest move you can. Okay, this is again, active we're doing the weeklies and the options, okay? And again, day trading where we're getting in and out. And like I said, if fundamentals help you, if that's a thing for you, great if it adds up with a gap rating. But if it doesn't, forget it. You can't just focus on fundamentals and expect that you're gonna make money trading because very often it's not gonna come up. You have sometimes good earnings and then the stock sells off again and just falls. So a big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market, stocks, creates momentum, and sets the trend in charts. When you're looking for institutional money, you're really reading the side of power in a stock. You want to be in the side of the power in order for you to make money trading. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times, even if you think it's not, it is. And again, very often people are wanting to go against the momentum, thinking that they're going to get tricky by you know, buying the dip or whatever, or shorting resistance or something like that. And they're totally against the momentum of what's happening, and then they lose. And it's, and it's not surprising that they lose, because again, 
Because again, if you're not on the right side of the power of institutional money, you are going to lose, okay? Okay, so we did number one. Number two is, like I said, you need to follow a mentor. You need a support system. And that's what I am for people. Before the class, after the class, you do and you follow. If I call the train, Long Apple, you do it. You follow me. You get in, get out. And again, this helps people. So me supporting people and mentoring them lasts as, as long as they're a customer of mine, as long as they're a client of mine, as long as they're there in the room. It's not even after the class that I just don't talk to people. I will continue to talk to people whether they're in the room or not. If they email me, if they call me. I've had the business now, like I said, for 13 years. I have people that have been with me for a very long time. It's a testament of how good I am at what I do because these people don't need me. They could rate gaps themselves and trade on their own, but they like the double, triple check. If they rated Boeing and they said this is a good short, they want to know that I think that too. So again, people like support. When you're trading, you're by yourself, you're risking your own money, you're at your home or your office or wherever you are with your computer, it, it can be lonely. And again, you're, you're, you're relying on yourself. So having someone there to support you is very, very helpful to people. So I have two weeks here, the last two weeks. I showed you yesterday's trade. Monday room was closed for the holiday. 62,945, we're gonna go over the last two weeks of day trades. And again, any questions right into the room, we're gonna go every gap here. This is an average risk of about 3,000 per trade, 83% win ratio. The last two weeks we had 12 trades, 10 winners, two losers. And again, win ratio of 83%. Now, these are trades on margin. These are day trades. If you didn't want to do margin trades, you could always buy a put or you could buy a call. Again, I have a separate newsletter for that. But, you know, if you want to do the trades in the room with me as day trades, you would set up a margin account. You could go prop. You can go retail. Again, we're, we've been on fire this year. And again, the interesting thing is that many of these trades are shorts, which we're going to go over. But this is the last two weeks. So... We did Boeing, and we're gonna go over the chart here. We did Boeing a couple times, actually. Then we did it again. There was the one loser. We did Apple, Tesla twice in one day, NVIDIA, Amazon. Then I was off on the seventh. We did NVIDIA, Boeing, Tesla, and JPM. JPM was earnings on Friday. So let's go to the 30th here. So this is 9.30, okay, so we, Enter the trade 152.30. Did an ad in this 7,000 shares. Average price was 152.75. Again, looking for a dollar or more. Got the drop, got out. Again, this was a really, 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 really nice trade. This was on the 30th. Again, this is a short. Okay. So here's BA. Stock close here, gap down. Got the drop. Boom. In and out. Done. Right there. This was Monday, I think it was. Yeah. Then we did BA here. I actually was up in this, but I didn't get out. Got stopped. This was at the, the, thir the 1st of October. And again, I do put in a stop. It's a limit stop. It's a hard stop. It's basically a limit order. It will stop me out. I was up in the trade. I just didn't get out. So then I did another trade here. I did Apple. This was, I don't know if anybody remembers this. Again, this was the 1st. Stock closed here, gap down. This crashed basically on that day really fell off a cliff. Again, hard to believe where, where it is at right now. But again, we play it, we get in, get out. We shorted it, 225.60 to the ad. Average price was 225.30, exited 223.85, profit was 11,600. These are all daily charts. That's where you see the gap on the daily. Again, this is a daily chart. Stock closed here, gap down, fell. And again, these are day trades on margin day trades on margin. I showed you earlier the options newsletter. That comes to your email. That's a newsletter subscription. The room is not an options room. It is a day trade room where I'm calling the exact entry. 225.60. Boom. Short it. Get it in. And then where I'm getting out. If you want to buy a put in this, when I'm calling 225.60, you can buy a put. But actually, again, if you're doing options, I have a separate newsletter for that. But they're not always the same trades, to be honest with you. There are times where I'll do an option in something that I won't do a day trade in or vice versa. Some stocks are not set up to do options or they just don't have enough volume. But if you decide that you want to follow me in the room and you only have an options account, buy the put. Buy the put, okay? But again, I'm doing the weeklies. So if you want to get in and out, you would have got in and out. You still would have got in and out of it there. Then we did Tesla. 
This was one I did it, I got stopped here. This was the second. Shorted it, got stopped, went back in, was a big trade then in the afternoon, got the drop, huge trade. Again, if you don't want to do this on margin because of the cost, then buy the put. It's cheaper. That's why people do it. I like to day trade, though. I started my career day trading. I'm always going to love day trading. And I'd say the room that I run is about 50-50. 50% of the people there are day trading, have margin accounts, are doing it with me, and then 50% are doing it as the option. So it's whatever works for you. It's the same strategy either way. It ha you have to have the gap rating. Then we did NVIDIA. Um, this was a long. We entered at 120.140, got out 122.55, boom, got the rally up. Again, this stock has been screaming, screaming up too. This has been another really nice one. We've done a bunch of calls on this as well. Then we did Amazon Long. This is on the day here. This is the fourth. Just show you here. This was this day here. Again, we got in it. 186.30, 187.45, a dollar out. Boom, done. 4,025. Again, this is a day train on margin. You don't want to do the day train, buy the call. Okay, that was a long. And then off for the seventh, no trains. And again, if I rate something and it doesn't get a good rating, then I'm not going to do it either. Then we did NVIDIA Long again. This was on the 8th. Oh, here, this was here. Boom. Stock closed here, gapped up, rallied. Could have done it the 7 2, closed here, gapped up, rallied. You could have done it here. You could have done it here. I was off on the 7th, but I did it the 8th. Entry was 130. Again, dollar or more. Get the move up, out. Again, beautiful trade, 51.75. In and out, quick. Again, I like to day trading. Sometimes we're done in five minutes. Sometimes 10 minutes, 15 minutes, we're done very, very quickly, usually by 10 a.m. Eastern time. So if you want to do day trains, you have to be available to trade between 9.30 and 10 a.m., between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. Now, we've been loving BA here. This had a beautiful gap. This was on the 9th. Again, stock close here, gap down, open, dropped. This was a short. We shorted it at 150.90. Again, if you want to buy the put, buy the put. We did, we did both. We did both in this. We did puts, and we did the day trade short. Got out. Again, Looking for 149, almost got there. Huge trade though, beautiful. Again, day trade on margin, you could have done a put. And then we did BA again. Stock close here, gap down, fell again. This was the 10th. So we did it here, we did it here. Again, I'll stay on top of something. If I see institutional money is selling something off, like I said, I will lean into it. Or I will do an option or hold it. Or if I think it's going to get bought, or I see it getting bought again, like Apple or Nvidia or whatever, then I'll, I'll lean into that trade. So again, until I get off of it, like we're off of this BA here now, right now, because it, it's it pushed back. We're 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 not in anything with this. But anyways, we did this here on the tenth, one forty eight forty five. Got the drop, boom, out, a dollar done, out, perfect. And again, this was another day trade on margin. And then we did Tesla. I've been loving this Tesla. And again, the crazy thing was this was last Thursday. Then I had the gap down into Friday. That was the night that they had that big show. But for whatever reason, nobody cared. Nobody liked it. The stock really took a beating. It was after the Thursday night into Friday morning. Entered the trade, 218.60. Got the drop. Boom, 217.35. This kept going. Profit was 1875. This was a nice short in here. This was nowhere near the low, actually. The fastest move, the biggest move really was right out of the gate. And then we also did JPM on Friday, which I said earlier was earnings. Stock close here gapped up, rallying. You could have bought it. 222.80, you could have also bought calls in this. And again, exit 224.50. So this was a nice, nice trade. And this was like a late entry here that I did. Got the extension. Again, this stock is getting bought. You know, the banks have been flying. And you say, well, how can that happen with the way interest rates are and lending and everything? Listen, banks make money all the time, no matter what. Even even when you look at what happened early 2023, when some of those banks went under, what happened? Again, they saved they saved everybody. I mean, it's it's on all these other little regional banks got scooped up by the big ones. So the big ones are flying. JPM, Citibank, Goldman Sachs, and again, we're in earnings season now. You're going to see more bank earnings coming out, and you want to watch that. As long as you have the strong strong financials, the spy is going to continue to make new highs. You're never going to have the spy at new highs without the financials. And you're not going to have the SPY sell off or fall anywhere or hold any move to the downside with the banks flying and making new highs. That's why even yesterday when we had that sell off, it's probably going to be short lived. And, you know, that's just the reality. So anyway, 62,945. These are day trades on margin. If you want to risk less, you can. You could take less shares. You could do options.
giving you ideas here of how you want to trade it. Like I said, it's about 50-50 in the room. But it's about taking good quality trades. It's about getting the direction right. And again, it is about following me because if you want to do well, you would follow me, okay? So again, 83% win ratio, and I do use stops, like I said, but we chunk it out in the room, in and out very, very quickly. And, you know, I, like I said, I've been teaching people as well for a long time, over 10 years. I think when people start trading, they start doing it, and they're very optimistic, and they think they're going to make all this money, and they're just going to be so easy, and then they lose money or take classes, learn stuff that isn't right, take bad trades, make mistakes, and then they, then they just feel so negative. Stop thinking negative. If you want to do well, you have to be your own best friend. You have to think positive. This sounds so simplistic, but the reality is that many people trade the market, risk their own money, and they actually don't believe they can be successful. They actually don't believe that they can make money trading, which I'm telling you that you can because I'm doing it for a long time. And also I've taught people who are doing it too. So if you expect yourself to be successful, you will. Now, it may not be today, it may be eventually, it may take time, you may have to learn it, but remember, number one, learn what to do. Learn what to do. No one's going out and saying, I'm gonna become a doctor tomorrow, I'm gonna start operating on people. You have to learn what to do, okay? For those of you that are talking about futures, Alan's asking about that, again, I don't trade the market every day. Yes, we've done the market. Again, I started the beginning of the lecture and I had the stats, we've done trades in the market, but there isn't a trade in the market every day. There's no trade in the market today. So if you want to just do the QQQs or the SPY, for example, there is going to be days when you don't trade because there's days where there is no gap that meets the criteria that you can choose a direction for the market. Now, I may read the market every day and look at something and say, this is what I think of this is going to where it's going to go. And we use that sometimes to pick our targets and the trades that we're taking, whether long or short. But the reality is that there's no trade there. Again, these are very specific trades where I'm looking for the momentum to come in and that it's predictable, that I can enter a trade on the one minute chart, that I can get in quickly and get out in 5, 10, 15 minutes, that I know that it's going to have a large move or a big move. So I had asked you a question before. Those trades were shares, not options, but you can do options if you want to. Um, what account size do you need to trade? Well, again, it depends if they're going to do options or going to do day trades. If you're going to do options, you can open up an account with $2,000. I wouldn't risk more than $100 or $200 per contract if you have a, that small of an account. If you, have, if you want to set up a, a day trade account, a margin account, you need a minimum of $25,000 at a retail broker, and you're going to get four to one margin. You want to go prop? There's prop places where you can get 10 to one margin. You can open up a prop account with five grand and get 10 to one margin, you'd have 50,000. You will determine your risk, again, your cash size, just despite what your margin is. So you can have all the margin in your world, but if you only have $5,000, you can't be risking $1,000 per trade. I would keep it around two to 300, build your account up to 10,000. Again, being conservative at the beginning will help you because the idea is to focus on having green, a series of green days, like I just showed you for the last two weeks, proving to yourself you can do it, especially if you're in the hole, especially if you've been trading for a long time, especially if you've been losing. So like I said, you wanna have the mindset where you expect yourself to be successful and then you will be. And again, you want to become an expert in one thing, which I did talk about earlier, which has to do with the focus. So like I'm doing this for so long that I just go look at a chart right away as I see the gap and then I can predict it. Now I go through the process. I do all the pre-work. I go through it and rate my gap. I get up early. I go through when I do it. But again, when I'm in the moment, when I'm trading, I'm there and I'm just looking at it and I'm doing it. And it's something that, again, if you're doing this for a very, very long time, you will get better at it. People jump around from too many things to too many things. But getting good is where you want to be. You ever hear this, uh, people are talking about a lot lately, this level up. It's, it's, it just applies to everything in life. It's not just trading. Too many people trade on the fly. They're not interested in learning. They're not interested in getting good. And then you wonder why people lose, why most people lose. Why do most people lose trading? Because they never really want to focus on it. They never really want to throw themselves into it, get good at it, never want to stay with one thing. They flip around too much. Getting good is the only way you're ever going to make money. And you only get conviction if you get good. Otherwise, you have no conviction. And when the market gets tricky, which there's days that it gets tricky for me, and there will be tricky days between now and the time the election is too, this whole month. 
trust me, earnings season is not going to necessarily be what everybody thinks X, Y, Z. There's going to be some earnings season surprises. What people think is not going to expect. And again, volatility is your friend if you know how to trade it. Okay, because again, what happens usually with volatility, you get big moves. Volatility doesn't always mean to the downside. Volatility can mean something to the upside that's unexpected too. All right. No, most gaps do not get filled. Absolutely not. That is a misnomer. And what I found, again, teaching people is people play that way, lose, and then they don't understand gaps at all. That's why they come and they learn how to do it for me. So I was saying I started earlier, I prefer to short. Why? Because of the panic that happens when stocks fall. You know, there's no panic for you to buy an emergency to buy Apple. You know what I'm saying? Again, it made new highs yesterday. You could think about it. You could do it today. You could do it later, maybe. Again, if, especially if it's a long-term swing trade or something. When something's falling, there's panic. That's why moves to the downside happen faster than moves to the upside. And moves to the downside usually also happen bigger. So again, I prefer to short. Although I showed you some longs. Again, we went long yesterday, but I do prefer to short for that, for that very reason. And I always, always will. So most of the trades that we do in the room are actually shorts. And again, you can buy puts. But it's the fast trades that I love about trading. It's again, it's about working smarter, not harder. If you can be done trading and make this kind of money, you know, 62 grand in two weeks, trading in and out in the first half hour of the day, why wouldn't you do it? Again, you have to take the necessary steps, learning, doing, following, and then getting good, adding the signs, and then you will get there. And it doesn't have to take as long as you think. It's just that many people are on this road for so long and they question then whether or not they can do it. I found, again, talking to people for as long as I've been teaching people, people just are not consistent with what they do. It's the one thing that I've always done since I started. I'm extremely consistent. I only do gaps. I have a business where I teach people. I'm not teaching people Forex, Bitcoin, futures, any of this. I am only teaching gaps. I'm only doing what I trade and do, and I'm an expert in it. Remember the pumpkin carver. Again, stay consistent, and you're going to get there. It's one of these things that you must be if you really want to have the longevity and it's about the focus. So for me, I focus on stocks that are moved or controlled by institutional money. And again, how do I determine that? I rate the gap. So this is what you come and learn in the class from me. How are you going to know what, what stock to train? You're going to rate it. So again, finding gaps is easy, but you don't need more than one trade a day. Like I just showed you the last two weeks, one or two. And if I'm doing two, I probably you know, took a stop in the one thing. Uh, Brian is asking if I wrote a book. No, and I never will write a book because it takes too much time. <laughs> it's just, I mean, writing a book, you know, I started TV like eight, nine years ago. They wanted me to write a book then. Who has time? I don't have time to write a book. So, you know, I the time that I have outside of training, I'm not writing a book. I want to enjoy my life. <laughs> you know, it's just like, at this point, you know, like I want to trade in the morning and have the rest of the day to myself. I mean, and then my weekend's off. I, you know, it's just like I teach the class once a month and the class is this weekend that I'm doing for October. And, you know, that's the time that I take outside, um, you know, to help people and teach people. But I'll never write a book because it's just it's very, very time consuming to write a book. And then unless you find a big publisher to publish you, you're, you know, you're paying to publish it yourself and then you get to market it. It's just so much work. You know, so if I if I ever full time go into television, I had an idea for a TV show. If I ever full time go into that, I probably will end up writing a book. But then the network actually helps you hire a ghostwriter and then the ghostwriter basically writes the book. But that, you know, that's a that's a whole nother story for another time. But the answer is no. Anyways, getting back into institutional money and gaps, there's only one thing and one thing that can move the stock market. And it's funny and it's always the big money. And the amazing thing is that as negative and traders and analysts talk about money, they're the reason that you can be successful. They are the reason you can be successful. If you didn't have these kinds of moves, you couldn't be successful. Again, it's the power of money. Someone's asking about it, you need to, you can do the math. You can do the math. You can do the math right there. If you have a four to one margin account, again, if you have 25,000, you have 100,000 in buying power. If you have 50,000, you have 200,000 in buying power. So again, you'd need more than 50,000 to take that position for a $225 stop. So you do the math or you go to a prop place or you do, but you buy a put, you know, you can buy a put for $2 or $3 in many of the things that I'm talking in here and you don't need to have 
the cash in a margin account. So, but you have to have your account set up to buy puts and sell them. And again, many people are trading the retirement account too, but you have to have that set up to be able to do that as well. But that was a good question. Anyways, here was NVIDIA where we're talking about that. We're talking about the checklist, important to have it. So the system tells you how, what, and when. How do you make money in the market? Trade a strategy and system that's profitable. Golden gaps are a highly profitable strategy because they focus on momentum to trade. You need to know what is the rating? Because if it rates under 20, I'm not doing it. So what stocks do you trade? Anything that rates 20 points or more. When do you trade them? Early in the morning, in the open, when they set up and trigger. And you must have a structure in place in order to make any money at all consistently. I've been hammering on this the whole hour. It is about the consistency that many traders lack. Many, many traders lack. And again, it's the focus for me. And this makes it easy for you. Then you're not second guessing yourself, waiting till 10 o'clock, waiting to see what the news says, waiting to something. You, you know before 9.30, I'm either trading today or I'm not. I either am shorting BA or I'm doing Tesla or whatever I'm doing. And again, I'm looking for a high probability of directional bias for the entire move of the day. Big move between 9.30 and 10 and precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward. So again, depending on how you want to do it, you could do the day trade in the room and you could buy the put if you don't have a margin account, okay? But I'm telling you that I do both. I'm telling you the trades I call in the room are day trades on margin and I'm telling you that you will probably want to do it because again, if you get a dollar move in something, it does not always equate to that in an option. Say you pay a $2, for example, in a BA put and the stock drops a dollar, yes, that trade is gonna be up. It might be up 60, 75 cents or something. It's not gonna be up exactly a dollar like a day trade. So I still like to do both, but I also like to do options. Why? I like to do options because I can get the move overnight and I have the insurance or the protection of being in a put, for example, overnight, where even if it goes against me, the only thing I'm gonna lose is the actual cost of the options trade and I can get bigger moves overnight. I can get larger moves holding overnight and I'm not holding any trades on margin overnight. So again, there's pluses and minuses to doing both depending on how you're looking at it and I can hold an option longer as well. Uh, my contact information, yes, is coming up, but you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. Anyways, you need a plan of action to get good, rate the gaps, get a good entry, and then the money management plan for yourself. This was me, I actually did a live class. I actually did a live class in New York actually in September. I'm not planning on doing another live class anytime soon, but it was very interesting to meet people. They came, they had a great experience out of it. And people got to see, you know, that I'm real, you know, that I'm real, I've been doing this for a long time. And again, it was, it was a good experience for people, but I am here. If you want to call me or email me, I make myself available. Does anybody know who that person is? Anybody recognize that person? See the picture of that man in the picture? Anybody recognize who that is? I was at a restaurant on Sunday and I saw him. <laughs> if you want to be successful, you follow successful people. You get where you're going, and then you learn from successful people. You follow successful people. I, I live in the best, best area in New York City. Yes, it's Bill Ackman. And you know how much he's worth? Nine billion dollars. Nine billion dollars. He did not get there in a day. He did not get there in a week. He worked hard. He still works hard. So again, lots of times people want to, you know, you do things so quick, it's like, think like a normal person. All the people that you can think of that are billionaires or successful. Elon Musk works hard. He can retire. He can retire. You know, you have to work for it if you want it. Now, if you want it or not, that's a different story. Maybe you don't want it. I always wanted it. I always wanted to be successful. I always wanted to make a lot of money. And when the mortgage industry changed, then I had to change careers. I thought I was gonna learn how to train very quickly. I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. I lost money and then I just threw myself into the market and it took me three years to figure out my system and I'm doing it now for a long time. But I worked very hard to get where I am, you know, to be able to even afford to go to a restaurant where Bill Ackman is. The point is that lots of people think they're gonna get something for nothing and that is not true. You're, you're not going to get anywhere with this if you don't put in the time and the effort and the money to do it. 
I have a YouTube channel. I have a lot of actually pictures of Central Park. I'm, a, I'm on Central Park. And I have a lot of, you know, ads that pop up. Some ad popped up the other day for some subscription that was $27. Do you really think if you pay $27 that you're going to get any good trade ideas from that subscription service? You're not. It's crap. I can tell you that right now. People, people think that they're going to. That's crazy. Be practical and think about it. Lots of times, people just take bad trades from subscriptions and classes and services that aren't giving you bad trades, and they lose more money in taking bad trades than they ever would paying for my class, which costs seven grand. So again, think like a normal person. Follow successful people. Look up how did people like Bill Ackman become successful? You know, it's it's not dumb luck. People really have it out there that they have a plan of action to get there. I get that everybody wants it to happen yesterday and last year and, you know, by tomorrow. I get it. But very often, success is very close if you would just stay on track and stay focused and give it your all. And it can happen way faster than you think. And what if it's a year from now? What if it takes you six months to make 60 grand in two weeks? Is it worth putting in the time and effort? And paying for my class and taking a weekend to learn of course it is you know what i'm saying so again put in the time and effort it's about being practical and professional and again if you come for me you're going to learn the 26 point checklist so empower yourself today to learn how to trade and again i teach in the class the 26 points the entries the exits and everything my class is called the golden gap course it's a full course on how to strategically find pick and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps the class is online for October. It's this weekend, the 19th and 20th. This is a good class to take. Why? Because it's earnings season. We're going to have a lot of trains, a lot of options, a lot of day trades, lots of opportunity. The class is 9 to 5 on Sunday, Eastern time. I'm in New York. Class is online. You could be anywhere in the world and take it. Email me if you want to sign up. The deadline is Friday, and I'm doing a welcome fall special. Look at this. It's gorgeous. Again, I live along the park. Beautiful picture. I'm doing a welcome fall special. You get the market subscription free for one year, the trading room free for one year with the class this weekend, and the options newsletter free for one year with the class if you sign up for the Welcome Fall Special by Friday. Class is $69.99. Everyone pays the same. Who signs up? Any last minute questions here? I think I'm good on time. And again, the special is through Friday. You can do it from home. You can trade from home. You can trade at any broker that works. But again, think about what I said today. This is real. This is mid, this is Central Park at night. Or actually, no, this is in the morning. This was sunrise. Uh, this is real. You can do it. And I'm here to help you. So it's just a question of you deciding that you want to do it and putting in the time and effort and think about what I said today. Um, Jay wants to show the slides from the beginning. Any other questions before I go back to that? Let me just see if I have anything else here. Um, think about your future. And again, it's earning season. Here's my information. They'll go back to the beginning. My email and the class dates. And Jay wants me to go back. I'll go back to the beginning. Oops. Anyways, I was thinking about it because I texted a picture of my friend, a picture. I knew, I knew it was, I knew it was him as soon as I saw it. He's on CNBC all the time. Um, but it's interesting, I said, yeah, I said to my friend, what would you do with $9 billion? Like, literally, you know, when you think about it, I mean, some of these numbers are, it, it, you know, just amazing. And when you think about it, and so like, for the idea of actually being able to make, you know, 2 million a year, 3 million a year, here's the stats. Um, it's, it's not crazy at all, because there's people that are making billions. Billions, okay? So think about what I said. Any other last minute questions here? How many banks do you need for nine billion? Well, that's a discussion for another time, Brian. <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. Uh, you have to be there live for the class, Philip. It is a live online class. You must be there live. Thank you so much for having me, everyone. Thank you. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Here's my email. And thank you for having me, Rob and Marissa. Thank you, Melissa. Really appreciate you being with us this morning.